It's all been leading to this, an incredibly powerful tool that I believe every Godot c -sharp programmer should have in their repertoire, the Static Event Manager. In my video on events, I mentioned that they have three distinct advantages over signals. Events have a cleaner, shorter syntax, events can use methods with return types as handlers, and you can declare and broadcast events from any class, not just a node-derived one. I showed those first two advantages in that video, but the third advantage, the largest advantage by a huge margin, is what this video is all about. Why is being able to declare and broadcast events from any class such a big deal? Well, the main reason to use signals and events in the first place is decoupling. The broadcasting node doesn't need to know about its listeners. The listeners just need to know about the broadcaster. But with the ability to declare and broadcast c -sharp events anywhere, your listeners don't need to reference the broadcasting node either. Only the events themselves matter, and all of your classes can have a direct pipeline to every single one without needing any sort of scene reference. So, let me show you how. Quick disclaimer, this tutorial assumes you know how signals and events work in Godot using C-sharp. If you don't, I have two comprehensive videos on those subjects linked down in the description. Let's take a look at what we have to work with and what we're hoping to accomplish. Here we have a recreation of our rocket ship scene from the signals video. In the scene tree, you can see that we have a rocket ship, which is just a sprite 2D, and a label. If we let the scene play, you'll notice that the rocket ship moves upward. What we want is to recreate the functionality we had in the signals video. Basically, whenever the rocket ship passes another 100 pixels, we print that pixel distance to the label. We'll be able to do this without either node having references to each other or any other node in the scene. Our rocket ship script is pretty basic. We have constants to hold travel speed and the check distance increment, variables to track total distance traveled and the next event broadcast distance, which is what we'll be broadcasting with our event, and a process method that moves the rocket ship up, increments the travel distance, and checks to see if we should broadcast the event. If it should, the event will be called where we have this comment, and after that fires, we increment the distance needed for the next broadcast. Currently, this is the only code in our project, and we'll build everything else together. Let's get to creating our event manager. Head on over to where you have your file system tab, right click, and select new script. Our code won't exist on a node, so we're just going to put it directly into our file system. Make sure that you're creating a C-sharp script and give it a name. I am going to name mine event manager, as that just always seems to be the most appropriate. Once it's created, double click on it in your file structure, and let's get to editing. Now that we have an event manager script, let's start deleting things. Get rid of ready in process as they will not be used at all in this class. Next, you can get rid of this inherits from node bit as, again, this isn't attached to any node. Then we'll come up to the using directives and remove using Godot. We're not going to use anything from that particular library, at least in this project. Lastly, we're going to replace this partial word with the word static. Static classes are classes that can't be instantiated, so you can't make individual objects out of them. Instead, you interact with them by referencing the class name itself. Static classes are great for when you're trying to represent an idea instead of an object. MathF is a frequently used static class in Godot and a great example, because while math has multiple disciplines and interpretations, math is just math. There aren't multiple maths. So when you need to know the square root of a number, you don't instantiate a math and use its methods, you just call the method on the class directly by using mathf.squareRoot. Similarly, our event manager will be the one and only, so we don't want to make any objects with it, so static it is. Now that we have our boilerplate ready to go, let's declare an event. Type public static action int in opening and closing chevrons and rocket ship distance event. We give our event a public accessor modifier because it should be accessible to classes outside of the event manager. Next, we add the keyword static. If you have a static class, all member data and methods must also be declared static. Then we use the keyword action because we want to use an event handler that returns void, followed by int in opening and closing chevrons because we'll be reporting the pixel distance passed, and then we name our event. I like putting the word event at the end of my events, but you don't have to. Now that we have an event, let's add a method that can be called by any class to broadcast it. Below our event, I'll type public static void broadcast rocket ship distance event, and I'm going to need an integer parameter to pass the distance. Then we'll type rocket ship distance event 
question mark dot invoke and we're going to pass the distance. If you've been following along with the other videos, you can see there's no craziness here. We have a basic public void method that broadcasts the event in the manner I showed in the events video. For those who missed that, the code in this method is the same as saying, if rocket ship distance event is not equal to null, invoke the event with the past argument distance. Static event manager is now good to go. Whenever you have a new event you'd like to add, do it in the same manner I showed you and pair it up with the broadcast method. I should say you don't need the broadcast method since the events are public, but I find doing the null check in one spot instead of potentially many is a cleaner pattern, so it's what I go with. Back in our rocket ship script, we're going to broadcast the event. Replace our commented line with event manager dot broadcast rocket ship distance event, and we're going to pass in the next checkpoint. Because remember, we're interested in the integer pixel distance passed, not the float travel distance that we have to check against. And that's all we need. Notice there's no references to any node. We call the broadcast rocket ship distance event method directly by referencing the event manager class name. Then it's just a simple method call passing in the correct arguments. Moving on, I've added a fresh script to the label node in the scene tree called rocket ship label. We want the label to listen for the event and update itself with the past pixel distance data. So first, let's add our event handler right here where we have process. Now we need to listen for the event, so let's do that up in underscore ready. The event exists in the event manager, so that's all that needs to be referenced, just like broadcasting the message. And, as you learned in the previous videos, you need to manually stop listening to events to prevent possible null reference exceptions. So we'll do that in exit tree. Now, save your script and return to Godot. Back in Godot, let's play our scene to see it in action. And look at that! Everything's working! Our rocket ship broadcasts its distance traveled every 100 pixels, then the label, without a reference to the rocket ship at all, updates itself. Truly a thing of beauty. There you have it, a system to send events to any node in your game without the need for references anywhere. The most powerful tool you will have in all of your games moving forward, I guarantee it. Until next time, the best to you and yours. And I can't wait to see you again. Take care.